I'm Patricia Farrer, and I'd like to tell you about the most difficult book I can ever imagine writing. It's called Science, a 4,000-Year History. And that's the sort of title that makes people laugh when I tell them about it. And I must say, it was quite a lot of hard work fitting 4,000 years into 400 pages. So sometimes I think that a better title might be The Book That Leaves an Awful Lot Out. One thing it definitely does leave out is all the heavy science. So if you're not a scientist, this is a perfectly easy book to read and to appreciate. What's in it, that's more difficult to say. There's all the familiar characters, Newton, Copernicus, Einstein, Galileo. There's also quite a few characters who you don't find so often in a book about the history of science. So for example, there's quite a few women. There's some astro astrologers and alchemists. There's people like sailors who knew about magnetism and astronomy. And there's also quite a few non-Europeans. There's some Islamic sages and some Chinese inventors, for example. I often think that writing history is rather like drawing a map. When Australians want to make a political statement, they sometimes produce maps that, of the world that to me look as though they're upside down because they've got Australia at the top and America and the United Kingdom at the bottom. And when you think about it, however odd that might seem, there's no scientific reason why the map of the world shouldn't be that way up. And my book's rather like that. I've taken the same facts and I've tried to interpret them in a different way, to turn the map upside down, if you like. So in order to do that, I had to make some difficult decisions. One of the things I had to think about is what counts as science, who would go in, who I'd leave out. And at first sight, that sounds quite easy. You just put in everybody who's called a scientist. But when you remember that the word scientist wasn't even invented till 1833, and people like Darwin, for example, never called himself a scientist, then you realise it's a bit more difficult because the Greeks, Isaac Newton, for example, weren't scientists, but I definitely wanted them in my book. So this is a book that asks a lot of questions. And one of the ways in which I decided to answer that particular question was to start with Babylon. The Babylonians were the people who gave us 360 degrees in a circle, the 12 signs of the zodiac, uh, 60 minutes in an hour. On the other hand, the Babylonian astronomers bore very little resemblance to people that we would now call scientists because they were more interested in finding out auspicious dates for marriages, for coronations, for battles. They found that more important than finding out how the world works. But I decided to start with the Babylonians. I've gone on asking questions through the book about what science is, who counts as a scientist. I've also tried to think about what, for me, is the most important question of all, and that is, how is it that science has become so important during the last few thousand years to our society? So I don't provide all the answers. What I do do is I tell stories about the past, because I want to help us understand the present. And the whole point of doing that is so that we can build a better future. 